Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to this uh, first ever A40 symposium. My name is Nicolas Flaget. I'm a senior staff scientist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore in the US. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the project that uh, my colleagues and I have started to work on uh, for the past few months and that we hope to complete um, within next year. And our goal is to implement an international version of the tool GES 1.5 from the French group Labo 1.5. My colleagues are Inge Jorgensen. She's the Associate Director for Operations at NSF Noir Lab. And Robert Nikuta, the project scientist and team lead for Astro Data Lab at NSF Noir Lab. The work will also involve uh, the Associate Director, uh, Han Newtonbrook at the NSF's National Solar Observatory Community Science Program. And this project has recently been approved by ORA, uh, by Pat McCarthy, the Director of NSF's Noir Lab, and Phil Puxley, the ORA's Vice President for Projects. So again, our work is going to be to provide a tool for ORA institutions to begin with, uh, so that they can estimate their carbon footprint in a consistent way. And before I go into details about why we want to do this, I just wanted to tell you a few words about uh, our background and uh, what led us to um, this work. So, of course, we are all uh, um, astronomers working in astronomy, uh, very sensitive to the topic of climate change and the impact that our research field has on climate and on greenhouse gas emission. And uh, we all started from different places. Um, I uh, I started um, to be very sensitive to these topics when I was in Hawaii, working at the Canada French Hawaii Telescope. In 2019, uh, through a personal connection, I heard about a Carbon Buddy, a carbon footprint tool uh, that people could use to estimate their own carbon footprint or their business carbon footprint or their event carbon footprint. And I contacted the person uh, who led that tool to estimate the carbon footprint of CHT over the full year of 2019. Um, this led to a publication in Nature Astronomy uh, in the summer of 2020, uh, alongside a few other publications, one from the uh, Australian Astronomical Community, one from the Max Planck Institute, and I think one from the European Astronomical Society uh, meeting. Um, then I joined Space Telescope here in Baltimore, uh, worked on the commissioning of James Webb. And now that the commissioning is behind us, I have uh, a little bit of time to uh, come back to these topics and hopefully uh, do uh, more uh, work on that and help people around me in the US community to, um, to measure their carbon footprint, uh, which is the first step toward lowering it. Uh, Inger, uh, as her position, uh, uh, at the high level in the operations of Gemini and then Noir Lab. She worked a lot on reducing the costs of operation at Gemini first, uh, installing PV panels uh, in the north and the south. Um, she also helped uh, reduce the uh, or improve the energy efficiency of equipments like LEDs and other things. And a few years later, uh, with Robert, they calculated the Noir Lab carbon footprint uh, again using the, the 2019 baseline. They then got the leadership uh, team at Noir Lab to include projects aimed at reducing the carbon footprint in the renewal proposals uh, at Noir Lab. And they got some of those approved um, uh, with the target to reduce by 30% the carbon footprint of uh, Noir Lab by the end of 2027. Um, if you want to know more about uh, all the good work they have done at Noir Lab, I uh, encourage you to check the poster um, at this symposium by Brian Miller, uh, who will give you many details about what uh, has happened so far and what will happen in the near future uh, at Noir Lab and uh, some of the observatories that depend on Noir Lab. So now let's jump uh, back to the present time, to 2022. Um, we um, we got back together and we started to, to talk about what we could do next. And uh, the thing that came uh, to our mind very quickly was the tool from the French people at Labo 1.5, uh, GES 
um, that you can hear about at this symposium. Again, also, Tamara and Olivier um, have a presentation about it. The, the beauty of this tool and of this organization is that all the labs in France, as you can see, more than 500 labs have used the tool. They have used the same tool, which allows to make very consistent analysis, comparison, trending uh, from year to year um, at the national level in France. So this is a great tool to make global analysis uh, across many institutes, not just astronomical, but any uh, type of labs. Uh, trend, uh, if you are doing uh, this analysis year after year using the same tool, you can actually make clear comparison and see where your improvements uh, are the most uh, required and where your efforts are actually making uh, changes. And so what we hope is to adapt this tool to the US because there is no such tool right now in the US. And because we uh, we all depend on Aura, uh, Inger, Robert and I, we offered to make that project first available to Aura institution uh, and have the tool tested um, by Noir Lab, uh, NSO and hopefully Space Telescope. So our first, um, uh, there will be a couple of components to this work. First, we need to adapt the tool uh, from a coding point of view, make sure that uh, it can uh, be uh, used by people in the US. Right now, the tool can only be used in France. And that is basically just adding a switch to the tool so that when a user goes to the web page, they can decide whether or not they live in the US or Chile, of course, because uh, there are some Chilean observatories that depend uh, on OA. And then there is a second part of the work that, um, that is the collection of all the emission factors at the location of your, uh, of your institute. So right now the tool only has those emission factors for France. So basically how much carbon uh, emission are related to kilowatt hours of electricity production. And those of course depend on where you live. Um, in France, there are some variations, but in the US and in Chile, it's going to be even more important. Whether you live in Chile, in Hawaii, or in Baltimore, the distribution of, of electricity consumption is going to be very significantly, it's going to be significantly different. So we hope to achieve this um, uh, in the coming month, where the project has been approved, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, presentation. And um, in the coming month, we'll work in close collaboration with the people at GS 1.5, uh, who had anyway um, um, uh, expected to uh, provide such a feature, but we will provide support uh, with software engineer to, uh, to develop those new features, to make the tool international and testing it first uh, at Aura. Then we'll, we'll hope that with the support of people like uh, all of you at Astronomers for Planet Earth, that we will disseminate the information, that we will spread the word about the tool when it's available, so that as many institutes in the US and in Chile will use it. Um, not only in astronomy, again, we want to follow the example of the French people uh, who were able to have hundreds of labs use it, uh, not only in astronomy, but in all fields of research. And we hope to achieve the same in the US. So we'll count on you. We'll need you to spread the word, uh, develop a user's community, and uh, hopefully at the next astronomy, astronomer for Planet uh, Earth Symposium, we'll be able to report on the first results and the first um, analysis of our tool. But thank you very much. Uh, I hope to meet some of you uh, at the symposium uh, to answer questions and just discuss about what can be done. Thank you and enjoy the symposium.